Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at something called Shmup Creator, which in theory launches today on Steam. Uh, I actually got an advanced key from the developers to go ahead and check this one out, and I gotta say, it's a pretty cool little program. Now this one is all about shmups, or shoot 'em up style games. So if you go back in time, things like uh, R-Type, or 1942, and by those examples you can tell how much of an old fart I am. Uh, but if you've ever played any kind of top-down style shooters, that is exactly what this is for creating. So you can see here right, in action right now, you don't need to do any coding, at least not with the traditional programming language. Let's go ahead and see what kind of games we can create, and then we'll take a look at how they are actually created. So, we'll start this off. We can move back and forth. We can shoot. So. And, yeah. That is kind of the idea. Uh, let me just advance forward a bit. So, obviously, you're seeing game uh, creation things, icons that wouldn't be visible in the game normally. So there we go. Went ahead and died. That gives you an idea of the types of games that you can create with this thing. Uh, and now let's take a look at how they're actually created. So we're in the level editor mode right now. Uh, and here, for example, is the player. By the way, if you need to do some of fin finicky selection, so right now we're seeing all the cloud effects. That's what these uh, big outlines are. Uh, you can actually go here and filter down specific types. So we want to go ahead here, select the player, and the player sprite is selected. With that selected over here, you can see you have the player controls, and you can set things up such such as uh, you can use banking, only lateral movements, uh, physics. You can have it so that orientation is no orientation at all. So you've got a straight upward scrolling style game. Or you can orientate with the right stick. So if you want to do something like Geometry War style, uh, you can control that here. Then we've got a number of other settings here. The collision setups. So it's basically the uh, sprite outline for that particular guy's hitboxes. Uh, you got stats there for basically the amount of hit points or health you have. You can have it have a single hit destroy your game, uh, so on. Uh, you could set up and create various different weapon sets. There are multiple weapon sets you can create, so you can have uh, power ups and so on that you've got. Uh, you can add uh, particle system effects and so on, and then your world itself is populated uh, in this vertical scrolling style thing. You've got this handy little slider here that will scroll you through the entire. Uh, level area, you're going to notice as you go, there's all these little boxes. Uh, these are essentially what control uh, the spawning in the game. Now, you can actually start populating the game uh, over here. Obviously, you could bring in your own assets as well, uh, but here you can see um, various different sprites. So, for example, we want to bring in a Chinook uh, helicopter into the scene and basically select that, drop it in, and create it like so. Now, if we want to add some logic to it, we can add a variety of logic controllers, gameplay stuff over here. So we can trigger in some special effects. So if we wanted to do a spawn, for example, I could spawn this guy right there, drag him in. Oops, connector. Okay, why am I in that mode? Let me just select. Hmm. Oh, I still got player selected. Okay, that's me being a dumbass. All right, here we go. So what you can do is you grab this guy, and then you can connect it up over like so. And you can see here, this is going to control the various different triggers. So this trigger will fire when uh, viewed by the camera, for example. Uh, and then you can have it do uh, various different things uh, on fire. So this is going to uh, spawn this guy when the camera views. Uh, and then over here, you've got the various different controls over uh, that enemy. Again, you can have them spawn in waves. You can control their weapons firing and so on. So that's kind of the, the overview of your placement. Again, over here, you use the game box for it entering entities into the scene at any time. Uh, this is actually just controlled by uh, a folder structure uh, in uh, Explorer. So if you want to add your own entities, you could do so right there. So let me go back up here, see if there was 3D sprite. Nope, not. Uh, so we have multiple different uh, examples. By the way, I'm going to show you another one in action. So you see here, so um, the various different entities that are used for these things are basically just files in the file system. Pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, then we've also got over here, you can switch from the level editor, which is what you use for placing uh, entities in the scene. And by the way, you can also switch out the camera that you're working with. You got layer control and so on. Uh, so I can switch to a perspective camera. I can switch to full 3D if I so wish to do so. Uh, we can uh, move things around, orbit things around, select things, and now I can move them up and down the Z-axis if I wish or I can confine it back to just the two axes. Uh, I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna go up to the game manager, we'll load up another example. So let's take this one in, for example, uh, pun that in and done. All right, so here we go. Let's open up a level from the level manager. Obviously you create new levels right here. And let's go ahead, grab that guy, load it in. And here you can see, you can actually do, uh, again, R-type style games uh, in action right there. Again, 
You can progress across the level using this guy. So you can see you can actually create games uh, in multiple different styles. You can create a Geometry War style game. Uh, you can create a side scrolling and a top vertical scrolling style game. Uh, you have these actions in place. This is for doing uh, camera effects, for example. Uh, here we've got uh, draw text on screen. You've got various different properties available there. Again, those are all available from the gameplay palette. So you've got weapon sets, killing things, randomly doing something, uh, creating smart bombs, triggering stuff, creating special effects. So we can drop an effects control in here. Then you see things like lens, sphere, glows, particle systems. You can create your own particle systems if you so wish to do so. Uh, and yeah, so that is the level editor side of things. We can also switch over to the game editor side of things. And here you see your game settings. So you can see the aspect ratio and so on. Here you've got game play settings. So um, control sets, the number of lives you get, and things like that. Uh, then again, we've got the explosions. So we create multiple explosions you can use elsewhere in the game. There is also a particle system editor. So if you want to create particle systems to use in the game, you can create those there. Uh, we've got a menu editor. So this is when you first launch your game. Uh, this is the menu, the performance. You're going to get all the various different properties and controls that you should have. Uh, we've got a HUD editor. So for um, showing things like uh, the score, the lives, and so on, and the HUD editor controls all of that stuff. And then finally, when you are ready to go ahead and build your game, you just click this button right here. Uh, I don't know if I changed it. Yeah, fine, save. I think I just added a particle effect. And this is building your game. Now your game is an executable uh, for Windows systems. Uh, I should have probably mentioned that right up front. This is Windows only. I do not know if it will run under Wine. And I don't know if there are any um, intentions in the future to support this to other platforms. But uh, it's definitely a cool looking project. And you can save out there. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it. We'll go back here again. Level editor, you get a tool set for the editing in the level. Uh, then over here, we get the uh, game editor. And again, the tool sets all completely change. And using that combination of things, you could create any style of vertical scrolling, side scrolling, and so on. Uh, come over here. We're going to load one more example uh, from the examples category. Uh, nope. And what you're going to see here is you got different options. So if you want to do uh, bullet hell style bullet patterns, that one example shows you there. This one instead just shows you how triggers work in a very simple manner. And this, again, the triggers is mostly how you're going to control your game logic. So here you can see an example. Player spawns in right here, hits this trigger. Uh, this trigger uh, behavior stays activated when the player goes in the zone. So when you go through this defined square here, this trigger will fire. It will go to these two enemies right here which are controlled via this guy right here. So uh, stays activated, connecting entities in a state of all dead. So when these two things are destroyed, this trigger will fire, which will then cause this to happen, uh, which is uh, going to change the camera scrolling speed up or down. I'm not sure what that is relative to, but you can see this is a simple way of how the game logic is handled. So again, here you've got a simple, uh, 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 what's the word I want here? Like a trigger pad, like a... Uh, tripwire that fires off an event that is tied to these two entities that when they are both destroyed by this trigger right here and reporting that. So when these two things are destroyed, we speed up the camera. And again, you can track up further in the world. So here you can see our next set of triggers. So this one right here, um, connected entities in a state of all dead. We have to display the text bonus. As you can see it displayed up on there. Uh, we give them uh, gold. And then up here, you'll see uh, a timer, a countdown timer. And at that point, we change the speed again, display some text, uh, camera special effect over there, and on it goes. So again, you're using this, this sequence of triggers. Here you can see triggers being used to handle special effects. Uh, this one is doing a glow effect. This one is doing the same thing. And then again, a timer that fires off a trigger that causes. So it's a very straightforward way of coding your game. Um, and it's an interesting project. Again, if you're not into shmups, there's literally nothing here for you. And if you're not, like if it, right now, it unfortunately can't build for any platforms other than Windows executable. So if you wanted to make a mobile title or uh, for different operating systems, that's not an option. Right now, all you can do is create uh, Windows executable. So it's mostly about, you know, sharing with your friends kind of setup, not professional game development. Uh, but I do see a lot of potential for it to go in other directions. So uh, it's an interesting project for sure. Uh, it is called Shmup Creator. Uh, once again, it is available up on Steam. Uh, unfortunately, I do not know the price because at this point in time, it's still in uh, pre-release and I got a free copy of it. So I, I don't know what he's going to charge for it or what she's going to charge for. I don't know the developer's gender. Uh, but it, it's going to really come down to uh, if this is the type of games that you're interested in 
in. It's a great little tool for creating these types of things. It has all of the uh, features and functionality I would expect in there. The programming method is fairly straightforward. You can definitely create bullet hell style games. Uh, again, the limitations are definitely come down to platform. It'd be interesting to see if they uh, offer additional platform support or different build option support in the future. But ladies and gentlemen, that is Shmup Creator. Let me know what you think. Uh, comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.